Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we are looking at the fourth grade concept of algebraic relationships, specifically how we can use input output tables to show how different quantities change, and we'll do it in five minutes or less. So in fourth grade, we've been looking at input output tables for a few years now, but things start to change. So let's say we have a basic number sequence of 7, 14, 21, 28. So you can see we're skip counting by sevens, or we're looking at the, the multiples of seven. But some of the new terms that we see in fourth grade are going to be position, numerical expression, and value. So what they're wanting you to really see, and if, if we want to, we can use some of our old terms. This would be the input. This would be the output. And this numerical expression is really talking about the rule. What's happening to the input to make it into the output? So what we have is a list of numbers, 7, 14, 21, 28. So those are going to be my outputs. Those are the numbers that happen because of the rule. Something, something is done to them. So let's go ahead and put them in here. So 7, 14, 21, 28. So position is literally which place are they in this list. So this is first, second, third, and fourth. So most of you can probably see what needs to happen next, but if not, think of the rule. How are we getting from 1 to 7? How are we getting from 2 to 14? So it's going to be a times 7 or multiply by 7 rule. And since this is uh, the numerical expression, we need to go ahead and just write um, the position times the 7, which is our rule. So 1 times 7, 2 times 7, 3 times 7, 4 times 7. So this is what a, a, num a numerical expression looks like within an input-output table. And this is how the input-output table looks in fourth grade, because they'll start using some of these bigger terms like position and value. Let's look at another example. Sometimes you're going to see a problem without the numerical expression column in the middle, but you might see positions and values. And as you see here, we have a position of 1, 3, 5, and then the pattern breaks. It goes up to 10. They don't always keep the pattern. And then the values move all the way up. And then we have a value 40 at the very bottom. And the question might be, what position would have a value of 40? So we're looking for this missing number right down there. So first, we need to figure out what our rule is. How are we getting from our position to our value. So we're position number one, something's happening to it, and it's turning into a value of 13. So we have to think if we're going from one to 13, three to 15, five to 17, 10 to 22, it's either gonna be an addition or a multiplication, uh, simply because you're getting bigger. So that's those are the two operations that can help us get bigger. And as I'm looking at the values, 13, 15, 17, 22, uh, 13 and 17 don't have any numbers I can multiply to it besides one in itself. Those are prime numbers. So I'm thinking it's probably going to be an addition because those are not normal products in my multiplication facts. So 1 plus what is going to give me my 13? 3 plus what? 5 plus what? 10 plus what? And when you think of it like that, well, it looks like 12 is probably going to be our rule. Let's see, plus 12 plus 12, yes, 5 plus 12, 10 plus 12. So my rule is going to be plus 12, so I can get rid of that. But now I need to think about what plus 12 is going to equal 40. And I give you, uh, I give you a guarantee that if you had an answer selection of A, B, C, or D, 52 would be one of those answers because that's 40 plus 12. But that's not the answer. We're thinking of an unknown number plus 12 equals 40. If we remember our fact families, we know that we could also write it as uh, 12 plus the unknown number equals 40. We could use that for counting on if we want, but that's not going to be quite as helpful as if we turn it into one of our uh, subtraction sentences. We can either look at 40 minus 12 equals our unknown number, or if I want to put it up here, I can say 40 minus the unknown number equals 12, and it's really going to be this one that's going to help me. 40 minus 12, and that's going to get me 28. So 28 is going to go right here in this position is the answer to this problem, because 28 plus 12 makes 40. 